止まらなかったんですあ、中田さんかったですかあ、はいあまあ、いいですけどこれ、いいですかねあ、はいやばいなでもこれじゃ見えない。
Oh, this region here, and this was that region there. So it's the same thing. It looks the same, but they look very different because what I did with this photograph was I turned it upside down. And so if I turned it upside up so that it was the right way to the end, the way it really would have appeared in the movie, what you see is that I get the same behavior down here, point with a cone pointing into the sphere, which is the cone is pointing in the direction of gravity. So in this case, I get the cone pointing up into a sphere, and this time it's pointing in the opposite direction of gravity. So there's something here that didn't depend on the forcing that actually got this thing to go in the first place. It was gravity that pulled this thing down, and somehow this thing managed to um, uh, do the same thing. And so there's something about these drop breaking apart which is universal. That is, it's it didn't matter about the details of what I was doing. That is, there was something universal about how the drop broke, broke apart. And so that's what I want to, to uh, emphasize here. And so uh, what I want to show you now is a movie of this drop breaking apart. And I should just tell you just a little bit about how this movie was made. This was made in our lab in Chicago, which is a very old and decrepit lab, and it's so old and decrepit that the drop is actually going to go sideways. Okay, so gravity is was pointing sideways. And so, of course, what we did was we turned the camera on its side so that we had the long aspect ratio. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to right here and move across the screen, and that is really the drop. The other thing is that this was taken around 10 times a second and played back at 30 frames a second, so it's a few hundred times slower than what would really happen if you really like it. So this is the, what happens, and so from here to here, which is about a centimeter and a half, is being pulled down. You will see the cone pointing to a sphere in a little bit, right around there. I want to show you this because, you know what, you know, I've been at pains to try and tell you why these are important to scientific problems. If you ask why am I really doing it, it's because I also think they're beautiful problems. And that this, I mean, if you were really honest with you, this is why I come to the lab every day, not because of Zeno's paradox. I mean, you know, th so this is the thing, and, I, and, you know, I'm not supposed to say that, but I'm trying to tell you myself that that's really what, uh, what, what the drama is. And I'm not ashamed of it, so that's what I want to tell you. Okay, so that's how the water drop breaks apart. But every unhappy drop is unhappy in its own way. And so these are different drops. So this is what you've seen already, which is the air, and you saw the cone pointing into the sphere. This is basically just a more viscous form of water that we took what's called glycerol and uh, mixed it with some water. So glycerol you're familiar with because you can uh, buy it at the grocery store or the, the, the drug store, and you can either use it for making uh, cosmetic things, but also uh, to make uh, stronger soap bubbles for, for your kids if you want to make big soap bubbles. And you probably uh, have a little bit more intimate uh, knowledge of this because I've been told that McDonald's puts it in their shakes to give it that je ne sais quoi de McDonald's. I mean, you know, uh, uh, they call it body, we call it the body. So this is a
journalist, and I get to tune which regime I want to study in here. And so, what I'm going to talk about, well, how should we think about this? And this one idea, which is, I, I hope I can get this one idea first. And so, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's not a trivial idea at all. So it's this idea of using scale and variance to try and understand something about that singularity. So what I kept telling you before was that the breakup, at where, when the drop breaks up, the radius is smaller than any other length in the problem. And I kept emphasizing that over and over again. Uh, that it's not smaller than the molecules, I don't mean that, but smaller than any of the other length the radius, the length field on which uh, gravity matters, the length field on which viscosity matters. These are the various things, scales that you could define. And because this drop neck is going to zero, it eventually gets smaller than any one of those. So it's infinitely small. of that thread at that point, that smallest po point, and not on any of the other length scales. And so, you know, I say that in, but why, why do we say something like that? And so, what I want to give you an, uh, some feeling for this is that if you think about rain coming down on a mountainside, and so the rain comes down everywhere, and it flows into these lines, in the stream depend on the fact that the water originally came from the mountainside. No, it doesn't make sense, right? It's forgotten all of that information. It can't keep that information because that was so long ago that stuff has been erased because it's on a different scale than the scale at which the real thing matters. because they're irrelevant. And so the flow only depends on that shrinking radius, but that shrinking radius depends on the flow, which depends on the radius, which depends on the flow, which depends on the radius, which depends on the flow, radius, flow, radius, flow, radius. Flow. system and you regain the original uh, uh, form back uh, that they were talking about. And th this is what gives rise to these universal shapes. And so our job as experimentalists was to try and go and see if this worked. And so what I want to show you here is what, this, what the mathematics of that picture that I just showed you was. And it's, what, it's this particular form, what it's saying is that there are two length scales at this point. One is this scale and the other is this scale. And what I get to do is if I know what the shape is at one point, if I want it at a later time, I just multiply this scale by something to get it smaller, and I multiply this scale by perhaps something else. And I just do that over and over and over again, and I can get as small as I want. And so this is a data. And I don't want to go into what this data is, but the reason I'm doing this in a public lecture is because you should realize that what we do is not just taking pretty pictures, but that you know this is painstaking data to get each one of these points to really be able to understand what that's doing. And so there is real data behind all of the pictures that I'm telling you, and this is you know, this is just the uh, placeholder for all of the data that I'm not showing you tonight. Okay? And so again, this emphasizes what is universal. And now you ask, well, uh, is it truly uh, 
is this picture truly the case? And then I'll ask about, well, uh, what happens if I did the opposite of what I just did? So before, remember, we were talking about water falling in air. Suppose I did the opposite of that, which is air rising in water, otherwise known as an air bubble rising. And so this is work that was done by Nathan Kahn, who is back there. And so uh, he uh, did this when he was with us. And so what I want to show you is a very careful experiment that he did. This was a very circular nozzle, very carefully leveled. So this is as level as uh, he could make it. And now we will see how this thing starts to uh, rise. And so it's rising. You get the same kind of thing. And you can see a little drop went up at the top and comes down. It's again a beautiful uh, set of uh, a beautiful movie here. But what was bizarre about what I just said was that I went to great pains to tell you that Nathan did a very careful experiment and it was very circular and very balanced. I didn't tell you that about any of the other experiments. I mean, I just said, this is the way it was. So why did I tell you that about this case? And the reason I told you that about this case is that there's something fundamentally different here than in that other case. And I can show this to you in the most blatant, which is focusing on that region in the middle. And we will see this happening. And now we've done something to make this as non-circular as possible. It's a slot nozzle. you that there's nothing less likely to tear than air and water. And that's all that's going on here. And so something is happening in how this drop or this air bubble now breaks apart from the other cases that I told you. And so again to wrap up this part of the story, uh, it's a and it again has some relation to human life in that you know, we always have this debate about raising kids, whether it's nature or nurture. And
doing this. And so what I have shown here are grains of sand hitting this the surface. And it doesn't look like that at all. That is, each grain of sand comes in and does exactly what you would think. You throw a ball at a wall and it comes right back at you. And so this is what you would expect from a individual grains of sand hitting this uh, platform. And now the question is, well, how about if I had taken a jet of granular material? So it was a little bit more like that water case where I have a whole jet of the water coming in. And so that's what this experiment is. So what we have here is we have a target up here. We have a tube pointed at the target. We have sand up to some point here. And we have pressure back here. We suddenly set the pressure go and we just spit out this, this whole jet of white sand. And so the white sand is, starts here. And when it starts to move here, you see this white sand starting to move down this tube. Okay, and then what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to ricochet in all directions? Or is it going to behave like a drop of water? And so uh, here is the uh, movie. And so watch this white sand coming down. It's a target. directions in this very, very thin sheet, just like that water belt was doing, that very thin sheet in all directions, and so that's what's happening. And so what changes between many particles hitting the wall and coming back at you versus the liquid, or that the jet, was that
This was not supposed to happen, and so after this, we were on the floor laughing hysterically for about a month. And before we said, well, I guess we better start doing some experiments to try and understand something about this. But, and th those experiments are still going on today, so this is uh, uh, not particularly easy not to...
structures, it's another word for that is called the bomb. And so uh, we try to avoid bombs in our lab, uh, but, uh, and we, we would do that if there was a reason to do it, but uh, we hadn't done that. Okay, so, uh, okay, so I'm ending up, I just want to end, show this one last thing. So there's lots of studies you can do with this. And so one of the questions that comes into this is, where does the air matter? And so we look underneath the drop, is the air mattering there? Is it mattering in the zone? What I want to show you is looking at what's happening above the drop. So is the air mattering as, as the drop is spreading above this drop? And so what I'm showing you now is a type of photography called Schlieren photography. And uh, this is helping you see the contrast between different index of the air in, if, uh, at different places. And so I'm going to show you just a little bit of this first. So I thought that here's a is 
see anything, uh, the structure, and so it's only at the edges that you see the structure. It wasn't that we, I didn't know. So that is, you know, you're surprised and I'm surprised too at that, that, that how nice that turns out. But these people were very good.